Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we saw that ES tested yesterday's support area of 46.75 to 49 quarter, where responsive buyers were active. And at this point, heading into the open, the market is chopping around yesterday's VPOC of 55.75. So that's a level to keep an eye on off the open. Heading into the open, we are going to continue to use the 47 to 50 area as the initial support zone. And if the market is holding above that zone, then we know that the breakout is still intact. Now, on the upside, if we are holding above 55.75, then that's a confirmation that there is continuing short-term strength in this market. And from there, ES can go up and test 60 half to 61 half pre-market resistance and the 63 quarter to 65.75 initial resistance zone, which marks yesterday's high, as well as the larger time frame swing high from December 30th. Now, as we go back into the initial resistance zone, keep in mind that it would be a second test of that zone. And if the market is going up on strong momentum, broad market strength with the other markets participating in the move, then there would be the potential to break above it and test 69.75 HVN and potentially the 71 half gap and 72 half naked VPOC. And that is still an area where responsive sellers can be active. On the downside, in the event of a break below 47 to 50, we can still get responsive buyers active at the support zones below. The 43 half to 44 half calls for caution because it's immediately below this uh, recent two day balance. And if the market's breaking 47 on a lot of weakness and strong downside momentum, then 43 half to 44 half is a spot where we need to be careful. But uh, 39 to 41 and especially 33 half to 35 half are still valid areas of support where responsive buyers can be active. Now, given that we have a lot of econ reports out tomorrow um, and the non-farm payroll report, the employment report is due tomorrow, and with today being the last day of the month, the expectation is for today to be still more of a two-sided session. It doesn't mean that it has to be quite as balanced as yesterday, especially in the event of a upside move, but it can add to the probabilities of sellers being active at 69.75, 71 half, 72 half, and especially 78 to 80 half. That marks a range extreme, and it is also a larger time frame area of resistance. So on the upside, if we are launching above 55.75, then initial resistance can get tagged pretty easily, but uh, even 69.75 would be in play. So, you know, whether we fade initial resistance or not, is going to be determined in real time depending on the real time momentum situation and how the underlying internals and the other markets are shaping up. You know, the automatic short idea at that zone played out yesterday. Uh, you know, the short idea purely based on location already played out yesterday. So today we just need to, uh, you know, take more things into account. And, um, you know, if it presents itself in real time where we're seeing a strong divergence or a disconnect in the internals or lack of momentum at initial resistance, then perhaps we'll consider it again. Uh, but if it's going up on decent momentum, then we need to be cautious at that area. But understand that 69.75 and 71 half to 72 half are still spots where responsive sellers can be active and then we can continue balancing in a range. Uh, same thing goes on the downside. You know, even if we break lower, the buy side can step in again and we can then continue balancing within a range. So those are the main thoughts heading into the open. Let's see if the buy side can maintain the short-term control here, and we'll take it from there.